All right, now I'm going to introduce to you rhabdovirus, which causes rabies, which became near and dear to my heart after it took the life of the best doggone dog in the West, Old Yeller. And this video, which really should have been about Old Yeller, will instead take place in a car junkyard guarded by a rabid dog. And it's titled Rabid Wrecking Yard. Front and center is our rabid junkyard bulldog, complete with an underbite and jowls, and he's foaming at the mouth. But before we talk about him, let's go over some basics. Rhabdovirus is a single-stranded, negative-sense RNA virus. Hopefully your instinct was to say, duh, Andrew, I knew that already. Obviously there are warm orange hues, which means it's an RNA virus. And it's taking place at night, so I already knew that it was a negative sense RNA virus. Oh, and it's single stranded like all our RNA viruses except for Rio virus. So shut up, Andrew. You're useless. Okay, jeez. Well, I bet you didn't know that it's enveloped because we haven't drawn that yet. We'll give our ferocious guard dog a little doggy hoodie. So now our dog's warm, toasty, and enveloped. The virus capsule is said to look bullet-shaped, so check this out. This is rhabdovirus under transmission electron microscopy. It really does look bullet-shaped. So back to the drawing, you'll remember that rhabdovirus is bullet-shaped by these bullets that we're adding to the collar around the dog's neck. He's one tough dog. Finally, rhabdovirus has a helical nucleocapsid, which we've illustrated by giving this dog a curly, helical-shaped tail. Rabies is a zoonotic virus, meaning it's carried by animals and transmitted to humans. In the U.S., the most common carrier is bats. Although rabid dogs are the stereotype, that's only really in developing countries. Other carriers in the U.S. include squirrels, skunks, foxes, and raccoons. So let's draw all our little critters here. Bats are going to be on the tree and our rodents up front. Now, how does it create the horrifying symptoms that caused Old Yeller to go nuts? And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, sorry for referencing the movie Old Yeller so much. Actually, I'm not sorry. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. It's an American classic. Oh, and in case you haven't figured it out yet, Old Yeller dies in the end. Sorry. Anyway, rhabdovirus has a glycoprotein that binds to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the postsynaptic membrane of the neuromuscular junction. There, in these motor neurons, it replicates. So, dangling from our bulldog's mouth, we're drawing a fat cigar. The cigar is nicotine for nicotinic. And also, scattered around the dog are these crumpled cola cans, acetyl cola cans to be more specific, and together, these will remind you of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. To remember that this initial infection occurs in the postsynaptic membrane of the motor end plate, we have a socket with a cover plate coming out of the ground behind the dog. So altogether, it binds to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic motor end plate. So now let's talk about the replication and infection process. After an incubation period of weeks to months, the symptoms begin to appear. This period depends on the distance of the site of inoculation to the CNS. The virus travels in a retrograde direction via peripheral nerves, creeping along at a rate of 1 to 3 millimeters per day until they get to the dorsal root ganglia. As it spreads along the nerves, it causes tingling and muscle spasms, but once it spreads to salivary glands, it results in increased salivary production as well as excruciating spasm of muscles in the throat and larynx, causing dysphagia. This results in the characteristic foaming of the mouth, and the virus continues to trek along, eventually leading to high fever, encephalitis, neuronal death, and almost invariably is fatal. So let's illustrate this pathogenesis. First, we'll draw a rusted out car with an exposed motor. Now see how the bullets travel up the bulldog's leash backwards to the engine? The bulleted leash is moving backwards, or in a retrograde fashion. Because rhabdovirus replicates in motor neurons, let's add a litter of puppies, or replicas, tucked under the front wheel of the car, or in other words, in the motor area of the car. Right next to the car, we'll add the exposed roots of our tree. Notice how the roots are coming off behind the tree, 
It's because they're dorsal roots. Recall that the virus travels to the dorsal root ganglia before spreading to the brain. On top of the car, we're adding a thief who's attempting to break into the junkyard. He's cowering from the dog, sweaty and red, feverish looking really, with this big red encephalopathic turban, all symptoms of infection. Also, notice he's drooling and foaming at the mouth. Diagnosis of rabies is generally clinical with a positive history of exposure and can be confirmed on biopsy or autopsy by finding negri bodies and neurons. So negri bodies are named after the Italian pathologist Adelci Negri, and they're eosinophilic cytoplasmic occlusions that can be found either within the soma of Purkinje cells within the cerebellum or in pyramidal cells of the hippocampus. We'll not only help you remember that negri bodies exist, but we're going to help you remember the location in which they're found too. So first, let's draw in an old beat up boat on top of the stack of cars. We'll give it big pink rust spots to represent the eosinophilic negri bodies. Also, the name of the boat is Integrity, with N-E-G-R-I for negri in bold. And what's this little creature on the side of the boat? That's a seahorse. The Greek word for seahorse is hippocampus. Comically, the hippocampus looks like a seahorse. And on the back of the boat, we'll add a canopy draped into a pyramid shape, reminding us that rhabdovirus specifically affects the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus. The other cells where you can find negri bodies are the Purkinje cells, and we'll represent these using bungee cords hanging from the tree. Bungee and Purkinje sound similar, and if you look closely, the tree is also drawn to look like Purkinje cell fibers and cells. And we even have these little pink leaves on the trees to demonstrate that negri bodies can be found in these Purkinje cells as well. There are only a few known survivors of rabies, that is, among those who did not immediately receive the antidote. It's critical that an antidote be administered prior to onset of symptoms and as soon as possible after exposure to the virus. Treatment is by passive immunization with human rabies immunoglobulin, which is given to those who have been bitten by animals suspected to be infected with rabies. Patients should also be actively immunized with killed viral particles, or a killed vaccine, after being bitten. So to represent this passive immunization for post-exposure prophylaxis, we're drawing this keychain dangling with antibody-like keys, because in passive immunization, you're giving preformed antibodies. So we'll stick these antibody keys in the back pocket of this poor febrile guy with the encephalopathic turban. Additionally, you'll want to give them a killed vaccine so that they can develop active immunity. We'll represent this by giving this guy a tranquilizer gun with a skull and crossbones on the handle. The skull and bones indicating that it's a killed vaccine. And just so you know, it's widely taught that patients should be vaccinated even if they just wake up in a room with a bat. And even if there's no trace of a bat, just because bite marks can be small and can go unnoticed. So give the treatment even if you aren't sure if they've been bitten. Because remember that once symptoms appear, post-exposure prophylaxis is no longer effective. So that's all for rhabdovirus. Not a huge problem in the U.S. thanks to our passive immunization and the vaccination of dogs. However, as Michael Scott from The Office says, Myth. Three Americans die every year from rabies. Fact. Four Americans die every year from rabies.